I design a new high altitude jet, Colonel Valley pulls an old jet out of mothballs and a whole lot of mapping satellites head off to various locations. All of this and more coming up right now. Alrighty, well, we're just about an hour and 20 minutes away from our next tech node, high altitude flight, and that can get me thinking about building myself a new jet that's going to be all about science. We'll start by, let's get out the old Panther. Okay, so it's got about 43,000 meters per second. I'd really like to have a bigger range, is really what I'm looking at. Hopefully, Doubling that seems ambitious. We'll see. If I can get it in around 90, that'd be amazing, but well, we'll see. Let's let's go new and let's take a look at jet engines. We should have some new jet engines available to us. Okay, we have this guy. That's the new one. They've got the Acadia turbofan engine. A potent air breathing engine that works well at most speeds, fitted with thrust reversing baffles but allow a sudden stomp and a short or long drop. Looks like this is just really an improved version of the Weasley, which might not be what I want. And then we also have the Dudley Heavy Turbofan Engine, a loud and impressive air breathing engine similar to the smaller Weasley. This engine excels at medium to high altitudes, but suffers from a lack of performance at high speeds. Uh, for a science plane, that might be the thing to do. Engine ISP is huge, huge. Oh my God, the thing's huge. Okay, okay, okay. So we're gonna take it, this thing off. Let's go back to our Mark II parts. We need the adapter job there, and then that goes on there. Oh my golly. Obviously, uh, let's, oh, not liquid fuel. Oxidizer comes out. Okay, this is going, this is turning into something very different in scope. Um, the thrust is berserk. So I want to build something clearly a lot bigger than this. A lot bigger. What if we got ourselves into some 2.5 meter parts? Oh, nice. I got some ones that are just liquid fuel now. I don't know where these are coming from, but that is sweet. So right now, it's structural. You can change it to liquid fuel, or liquid fuel and oxidizer. Nice. That gets me into kind of the Delta V's I'm talking about and still a crazy amount of thrust. It is gonna be an interesting looking thing. <laughs> sort of taking a look at intakes here. I want an intake that can give me a lot of air in a high atmosphere. <laughs> can suck in a large amount of air, geese, and chickens at lower speeds, though. Well, then again, that might be exactly what I need, isn't it? Again, this is not about speed. This is about altitude. Oh my god, it's huge, though. That's why. Boom, 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 boom. Now, another option is to mount these kind of things radially. It's 106,000. That's a ton and lots of thrust. This is the kind of thing I'm thinking about. I don't think this is terrible looking. I don't think so. I think I've seen dumber looking things. That's always a good standard to set for yourself. As long as you can think of things that are dumber than what you're building, then, then you're doing a good job. That I think scale wise is good. Still under the width for the runway. Thrust I'm sure is still fine. Yeah, thrust is fine. Okay, um, let's slap on some control surfaces. All right, we're gonna put an antenna in here. Uh, communications, now I can probably get away with, okay, this is the one I have been using and it has a speed of 25 kilobytes per second. We do have much, much, much faster ones. I need something that can stay inside the cargo bay and not get wrecked. This one is got potential. So this is the Communitron, and I think that will stay inside there without getting wrecked. I think that is my plan. 
Um, and that is the Communitron HG-61 with a max speed of 253.53 kilobytes per second compared to the 25 kilobytes per second I was getting with that one. So I think that has potential. Okay, uh, science-y stuff. If I get into science, we do have, I believe, this is the one that's been on the panther that's been doing the wing experiment but I am pretty sure I got other science I can do now so figure there is the atmospheric fluids that's the stock experiment I don't think I've done this and then we have the press map barometer which I've done a lot of we have the wing experiment which is what the panther has been doing we have the cloud experiment which requires a level 3 pilot and it's only done flying high, but in different biomes. A ton of electricity. But that might be a good experiment for this one. So I'm thinking this, and let's just check the science log here. Oh, it requires sample slots. So I've not done this either. So I think, I think that's the way to set that up. The cloud experiment is a crazy quantity of electricity, 8.393. What do these things generate? That's a good question, do they? You know what, let's, let's not get ahead of it. We haven't even discovered whether this thing flies or not. Let's do one thing at a time. And breaks off and let's punch it. Does this fly? Does this fly? That is the key question. We are going up. We are not lifting off. We have a lot of speed and we're not lifting off. So that's not good. Oh, oh, now we... Oh, oh, dear, 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 dear. So clear this thing is going to need some work. <laughs> Okay, um, let's terminate that simulation. <laughs> I don't like how low that lift is. That's kind of what's bugging me. That's very, very much bugging me. All right, Valley and Mad B, let's see how this goes this time. No, still having trouble. Oh, 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 God, ding, dong, ding, dong, bong, come on, come on, yeah, 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 oh my God. <laughs> Let's re why okay, got off the ground, but I just lost control of it immediately. Oh no! <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my golly. Maybe some stra oh my god, I'm flying. This thing is fl oh my gosh, look at this. This is a better plane. It's better now. Oh no engines unfortunately, but there we are. See? That was a better plane once I lost some parts. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Like some internal strutting is in order here on those wings. Whoa. Like, look at the way the wings all flex. Oh my god. This thing looks like hell on a stick. Wonder if I should, um. Ah! There it goes again. What if we went into physical struts? I'm not used to building something as big as this. And we need to somehow turn all those those wing bits into one thing. And I'm sure there are people out there that are more experienced at building planes that are probably looking at this. We just need to do this. I do want to try this with better with different air intakes. I don't know better. I just think I might have the wrong kind of air intakes on this. I think I might have air intakes that are more designed for big, slower jets rather than high altitude jets. I don't know. Still climbing. We're over 16 kilometers at least, but I think we're about to start losing. Yeah. We're starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think pitching up is not going to help. Okay, let's terminate this. And we're gonna try it with those other air intakes. So the same, everything's the same. Might have to put some more struts on it. 
more strats, but everything the same. What I'm really, I think it's this flow number that I really want to look at when we get up to the upper atmosphere. I know this was getting well below 100 with those other air intakes. And what I'm interested in is, oh, we're on supersonic. <laughs> what I'm interested in is, you know, can, is this going to be a nice bigger number in that upper part of the atmosphere? This thing looks like it just wants to eat you for breakfast. <laughs> Just looks like it's inviting things to get sucked up in there. I'm still going to be concerned with I'm not climbing great and I'm going to be... I don't want to build bigger wings. It might be what this thing needs though. It might just need flat out bigger wings. A bigger wings fan. Oh, this is getting so close. I mean, I can get it to go over 18 kilometers, but I'm just not quite able to get it to cruise it over 18 kilometers. Alright, I'm going to try one last thing here, and that is actually to get rid of most of this fuel. Make this thing lighter. So these are being changed to structural parts, so there should be no fuel there, no fuel there, no fuel there, no fuel there. Surprising still quite a lot of Delta V. Really watching this rate of ascent. You can see it's dropping off here. 45 meters per second is my climb rate. And you can see even the prograde vector dipping, starting to dip well below the plane icon. The question is, is can I get it level above 18 kilometers? That is the key. I can do that. I got it. Um, I don't know. It's going to be close. 17 and a half. Another thing, too, is maybe more air intakes. I know that seems ridiculous, but I don't know. Okay. That is 18 kilometers right there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, there's there's the issue. i got to keep it above 18, but I'm doing it. I think I'm doing it. I think I just need to shed just a smidge more weight, believe it or not. That, with the combination of just a bit more air intakes, I think should make cruising up here pretty easy. So I went back into the VAB. I did that. I also added on some air brakes, and now I'm pretty confident I can just consistently cruise this into the upper part of the atmosphere which is going to be its main role but of course it still has to fly around it still has to land so I thought I would just test its maneuverability in and around the KSC and by the way this is iteration 11 of this particular plane I spent hours on this one way longer than I should have and I didn't show you half of my trials and tribulations We'll try and bring it down in here for a landing, and it, oh, I'm not lined up pretty well, so screw it. I'm going to just put it onto the grass beside the runway. If you can land on the grass, you can land on the runway. Oh, and there we go. Easy peasy. I think it could use a little bit more in the air brake department, but otherwise, I think this thing is done. Unfortunately, with all its new parts, it is going to take over 17 days to build, so uh, don't expect to see it too soon. So let's get to something that, for long-time viewers, might look a little bit familiar. Well, here we have a blast from the past, all the way back to my first season. This is a seaplane that I built to uh, rescue Kerbals from the water back when I had a contract pack that did that. Uh, it was the Giving Aircraft Purpose contract pack I believe I had, but I don't have any more because it just hasn't been ke being kept updated, but I still do have this plane, and you can see at the helm here is Colonel Valley Kerman. It's an old plane. Uh, this is the only... I only had single player cockpits at the time. I actually put in more seats here by sneaking... I think I should be able to open this up and show you. Uh, command seats in here, <laughs> which I'm not using now, that I used to put in my rescue Kerbals because I just didn't have uh, other means to do it. But we do have a contract, and uh, this is to gather rare science results from Kerbin's water. And if you go over this, it looks, you know, surface water landed. 
uh, do a surface sample, do a blue report, do a EVA report, you would think, oh, that, that's, that's a pretty easy peasy thing to do. Uh, and I thought it was too, until as I was doing some of my Panther missions, I started to notice these waypoints here saying, suggested water landing site. Um, so there's two up here at the North Pole, towards North Pole, one down here towards the South Pole. Uh, we're heading towards one of the ones at the North Pole. I'm really hoping just one of these is fine. I thought this contract was going to be one of these like, oh well, next time I put something down in the water, I'll just do these things and we'll get the contract. Uh, yeah, turned out not to be quite so easy. So, uh, well, we're taking out a vessel. I could have actually just ditched anything in the water, I assumed, and just recovered it. But I figured what I'd do is take a vessel that actually is designed to land and take off from the water. And it's an old plane. <laughs> and it wasn't exactly the most dependable thing in the world either. But, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Of course, it's Waypoint Manager that's placing these waypoints so that we can see them here. It's one thing I, in stock, I don't understand why these waypoints here only appear in map view. It makes when you have them wanting you to go to a specific waypoint a real pain. Just put it on the screen. I don't understand what the problem is. I do that very kindly, but it's still. <laughs> Has to be close enough. Seriously. Situation landed. We're landed. Or maybe because we're not stopped. Okay, it does not say situation landed, so I mean I guess technically we're splashed down. I do a crew report. Crew report's running. Time warp it away. I'm not sure it's given it to me. Was I supposed to be? Okay, that oh, there's actually something there to collect too. <laughs> but it's not checking off on the contract. No, now it says situation landed. I think I'm landed. This is landing. I call this landed. Okay. Um. Well, let's t let's. Okay. Let's uh. We'll do. We'll throttle up, we'll get out of here. Run up we go, there we go, that would go alright. Let's... Let's actually land on the ice shelf here. Oops. <laughs> and those are just the nose guns at the front, I'm not sure that's a big deal, but let's slow... Oh, it's icy! <laughs> Okay, uh, where's that waypoint? So now it says situation landed, so that's good. Um, might have to force that crew report. Oh, here it is, force run, under info, force run, there we go. Under info, force run. I thought there was something in there so you could do that, or else if you couldn't force run it, don't fall off. <laughs> if you couldn't force run it, then you can't like do these types of contracts. Of course, it's all Kerbalism, right, that's making, putting in this automating feature, which is great. So, so many times you can sit here, collect science, just set it on waiting, and it collects science when it's appropriate to do so. And a crew report force run, but info force run. But I'm looking at this now. These didn't go green. So as far as I'm concerned, I've done this. I think it's just somehow warped. So I'm going to, I'm going to. Alt F12 cheat menu my way. God, that happens a lot with these contract packs. As far as I'm concerned, this is done. This is the gather rare science and it is complete. I don't care what you say. We're done that one. We have a Maxwell coming up. And I do have to keep an eye on my space camp. They're eight and a half days from being ready. I gotta make sure all my pilots are available by then. Oh, we're getting an eclipse. Look at that. Shouldn't be too exciting. They happen every, was it six days that the moon takes to go around? Okay, so here we have a vessel you have actually seen before. This is the Maxwell 5B. There was a Maxwell 5. This is an identical craft to that. 
Uh, but I had forgotten to put an antenna on the original Maxwell 5, realized it was completely useless, so rebuilt it, put the appropriate antenna on there, and now it is off into a, well, very familiar polar orbit uh, with an altitude of 250 kilometers because that is the best altitude for this high resolution resource scanner that is going around Kerb. And yeah, we are plunking our way through a whole pile of ScanSat contracts getting this new ScanSat equipment up and going. And done. There we go, a little tiny bit of animation, that is it. But this is now starting its resource scan. We'll leave this to its own devices, get back to the Space Center. Eight and a half days to the Space Camp is done, so the pilot that I use for the Panther mission that I'm thinking about, and it'll finish off that Geological Survey of Kerbin contract, they take a week off because of crew R&R mod, and that will get them back in time to be able to help with getting everybody off that space camp once the space camp is done. Yeah, I think so. Let's get in the space plane hangar. We'll do a Panther. All right, so we're back here with the Panther Mark I, and what's left on this geological survey is to go to the Badlands and the Northern Ice Shelf. And that is it, and do surface samples there. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might, maybe, I'm not sure if this has the legs to do both, but I think we're gonna find out. But I'm gonna make the first target the Badlands. That should be the closer yeah, one. So what I'm gonna do is thing. I'm gonna open up our big map again. We now have a complete biomap of Kerbin. And the Badlands are in this zone right here. So what we'll do is we'll put a waypoint put it into the general vicinity here where there are badlands. We are, because of Waypoint Manager, giving us a heading to here of 106, let's call 170 degrees, so let's head that way. We'll also do our best to collect lots and lots and lots of science too. I can see right now we're not going to be making it to the northern ice caps. We'll be doing the Badlands. We want to have the fuel to go up to the pole. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just do our Badlands thing, do our surface sample there, and, you know, pretend <laughs> to fly home. I don't want to do this flight again. One thing, of course, we're going to be doing as well is we're going to be circling over the Badlands. That will be a new biome that actually, honestly, I don't think I have been to, honestly, in this entire series yet. So we got some science that we're going to be collecting over the Badlands. We've got about a minute left. We'll bring the antenna down, too. I just descend in the ladder. Oh, and I just broke the antenna. Shoot. I got a little too aggressive there. Doesn't take much. Okay, hang on. Why won't that ladder retract? Retract ladder. There we go. Okay, off. Let's get down to the surface. Should be okay. We have the hard drive space. As it was coming down, I, got, I just started reducing altitude, and that got my speed up too high, and I broke the antenna. I should have waited for it to be all the way down. No big loss, though. Clear this thing's going to need some repairs again. There we go. Gently break. Or not so gently, it seems to be fine. <laughs> Alright, gotta collect ourselves a surface sample for the contract. We'll also, while we're here, do ourselves an EVA report. And of course, we'll collect all the rest of the science that's available here in the Badlands. But this will only leave the northern ice shelf left to do to finish off this geological survey contract, but that's going to have to be for the future. I can't afford the pilots anymore. I'm going to need my entire pilot roster in order to bring those space campers down in about a week's time. In the meantime, though, well, we got more mapping satellites. And that means it's time for another Maxwell. We are now up to Maxwell 6. This one being another high resolution altimetry scan, but this one is on its way to Minmus. And as the probe is virtually identical to the one currently orbiting Kerbin and the Moon, uh, we're not going to spend too much time with this other than to watch it head off on its way to Minmus. 
Weird here, like Kerbal Engineer and the game completely disagree on how much Delta V there is in this in this stage. The game says it's, or the Kerbal Engineer says 1,233 meters per second. This says 680. Um, and I'm noticing, okay, we are past where the game thinks we should be starting the burn. But I do have my X-Men script. Oh, now the X-Men script is starting to... There's something wacky going on here. Something's not right. And I don't understand what it is. There's nothing complicated in this. There's one fuel tank and then this uh, spark engine on here. So why does the game think I have less Delta V than in my... My script themes thinks things are fine. Kerbal Engineer seems thinks things are fine, but the game thinks there's a problem. I'm noticing the red section's going down. <laughs> that is so weird. <laughs> so pretty soon, everything's fine. And we shouldn't have a staging event, unlike what's saying here. There, now it's saying we're fine. And now the staging event is going to disappear. Oh wow, I have no explanation for that. That is so funny. Okay, okay, no more fiddling. <laughs> These little spark engines, they have a lot of ignitions. I still have 12 ignitions left, so but I do have to be a little bit conscious of that. All right, we'll do a tiny correction burn on our way there, but otherwise, uh, this guy is... We'll revisit you in a week. Okay, let's pick up another contract. Oh, here we go. Sentinel Asteroid Detection Map. 15 Asteroids in Danger and Kerbal. I, oh, definitely. Let's grab that. Let's grab that right now. Let's get into the AB. Let's build something. That telescope might be a good thing just to do something different. I want to get into exploring those asteroids too. We're laying a lot of groundwork, but I want to start pushing out. Moon, Minmus, and Near Asteroids should be our targets. Have the Sentinel Infrared Telescope aboard. Research the designated orbit around the sun with minimal deviation. So, okay, 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 that's cool. This is a little bit smaller than Kerbin's orbit. Map 15 asteroids with an eccentricity greater than 0.0. Okay, you just have to leave it there. All right, so let's get ourselves together a budget, a Delta V budget. So I figure a budget, I'm getting like 1708 but I'm gonna round that up to about 2k for my budget to be able to put it into this orbit that's getting into the ballpark of what I need still got to think about electrical storage I mean at least planet oculation is not going to be a problem with this thing orbiting the Sun rather than orbiting a planet but I do want to work all that kind of stuff I also am slowly getting better at putting more attention into the comms network both the connectivity piece of it, but also the bandwidth piece of it. Uh, ended up going with this HG-55 antenna with its 15G rating and its 200 kilobytes per second transmission speed. Very similar to the HG-61 that you saw me install in that high altitude jet earlier in this video. And both of those antennas pretty much represent the top end of what I've unlocked so far. Should be good. This telescope takes a long time to collect its science. Kerbalism has it set up that it takes well over a year for it to collect all the science that it's going to collect. So we're going to have to make sure that this thing's going to last for a good long, long time. And here you can see me testing it in simulation mode, making sure that it does fly okay. I didn't introduce any silly imbalances anywhere. And of course, we're still going to do some tweaks to it, adding on lights and changing textures and trying to make the thing look good. Final weight came out to be about 1.5 tons, which I should be able to easily find a booster that can handle that. And while I'm putting on these finishing touches, I want to welcome aboard our newest patron, Mark Eisenberg. Thank you, Mark. Your support is greatly appreciated, as is the support of all of my patrons. And if you're interested in supporting this channel, well, one quick, easy thing you can do is make sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so. As well, there is a link to my Patreon page down there in the description, should you choose to go there. But this thing is pretty much, I think, ready to go. Of course, it still needs to be built through Kerbal Construction Time, so we'll see it launch in a future episode. But, uh, well, I got one more launch to take a look at here. 
And yeah, we're doing it again. This is now the Maxwell 7, and this one is doing a high resolution resource scan. I'm gonna hit this right myself. Resource scan of the moon. Um, and I don't know, it's the same as all the rest of these. So this one is off to the moon. Nothing again too exciting. You have seen the scanner before because there is one all going around Kerbin right now, and yeah, I do have one coming up that it will be going to Minmus too. <laughs> okay, what's going on in Kerbal Construction Times Building Base? We got puffs coming up, two puffs coming up in the next couple hours. Panther's still gonna take a day to fix, and then the Dudley, which is that high altitude jet, it won't take 50 days, don't worry about that. But then we got all these puffs, the next one's less than two hours away. I really gotta start thinking of more things to build. I have three bays in the VAB that can do building, and I like to keep them all full, so I have to think of something else to build. All those puffs, by the way, is for getting my space campers back down. And that's only about two and a half days away for that contract to be done. So you'll be seeing that at the very beginning of next episode for sure. It's gonna be interesting flying them all down. And speaking of interesting, guess what came up again while setting up my Moonar Injection? Same thing. Isn't that weird? Stock thinks I have 571 meters per second left in this probe on this stage. Kerbal Engineer thinks 1,268. I wonder what it is about this thing it doesn't like. There's nothing really wacky going on. It's this stage, and I mean, it's a fuel tank, like, I don't know. Weird. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm not gonna worry about it. And I suspect, like last time, it's gonna start this burn. Well, I think it's starting it on time, but uh, it's gonna be starting it late based on this prediction. I have no idea what the issue is. And it's not like, like, these probes are all more or less slight modifications on each other so I have done this configuration before with the fuel tank and then this re, uh, restock stack adapter and then it's just a very familiar spark engine down there on the bottom but for whatever reason the game doesn't like it At some point it's gonna start to burn <laughs> there we go three two one and go Yeah, and it's happening again. If you take a look at the nav ball and take a look at the red part, you can see that the red part is shrinking away. <laughs> Very slowly, uh, KSP is coming to realize that uh, it's calculating this wrong. And although it's saying I don't have enough fuel to do the burn, it's uh, adjusting its mind <laughs> is what it's happening. You can also see that there's a... Uh, it's saying that there'll be a staging event in there. And as you can keep watching, you'll see that that will disappear as well. Hey, now everything is in the green. Anyway, we'll catch up with this guy with its Moonar insertion. I should have the Circat program. So run Circat. Periapsis. Beautiful. And let's just take a look at what our project projected inclination is. So let's select a maneuver here and 0.96. So let's see, we can maybe just tweak the normal component of this a little bit. Yep, that's going in the right direction. There, oh, 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 went one too far. There we go. Okay, our projected periapsis. Uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. It's beautiful. I'm noticing now all of a sudden that uh, Engineer and the game are green. They're both saying I have 356 meters per second left in this stage, so... <laughs> why? I don't know why. And I do apologize for all of the mapping satellites, but I think it's good to kind of push these out of the way. I'll get them going. They're all contracts that take time, too, because the contract's not resolved until we've done 75% uh, of the moon with this particular scanner. But as you can see, our burn has started. 
and we'll detach this, we'll deorbit it, get it to crash into the moon, and we got our little probe up here. So little probe has 96 meters per second left in it. It's just a tiny amount of fuel in these little tiny fuel tanks here. All right, that's good. The orbit is, yeah, it's close enough. Oh, it's all close enough. Ideal altitude is 250. It's 249 and a half or so, but I mean, that's fine. All right, let's uh, detach that. I was saying, just these little fuel tanks, that's the only fuel it has, but that's enough for, um, that's enough for any minor orbital maneuvering I might do. Okay, let's actually turn no, no, no. This one? No, no, no. <laughs> this one. There we go. I just wanted to turn our scanner towards the sun so we can see it. So again, it is just a one, I think, action group. There it goes. Oh, that goes the antenna. Scanner didn't turn on. Let's start the scan. Maybe I had them on different things. Same thing we saw just a little bit earlier in this episode. But you know, I think with that, I think I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. Make sure to join us next episode. I got 16 space campers that all have to come down to the surface in my sketchy little space planes. Could turn into an adventure. But for now, I'm going to thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.